गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स हम तक रहमान आम ए प्रोफेसर एट द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ जोग्राफी फैकल्टी ऑफ नेचुरल साइंस जाम मिलिया इस्लामी न्यू दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड जीआईएस डेटाबेस क्रिएशन अ मॉड्यूल व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वी ऑल नो व्हाट इज जीआईएस आई विल आल्सो ट्राई टू टॉक समथिंग अबाउट जीआईएस इन दिस स्पेसिफिकली वी आर ट्राइंग टू फोकस वी आर ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ वी कैन क्रिएट GIS database which is very important for analysis planning decision making process so uh, the broader topic which are we are going to understand what is GIS what are different component of GIS what are different GIS data set so uh, data set what are different uh, da GIS data sources and what are different methods and techniques for creation of GIS data sources so within this framework we'll try to see how we can create gis databases for planning decision making process for any problem that to exist on space on the surface of the earth where human and natural problem which does arises due to certain activities that can be solved that the data which we create in a gis environment by using different sources of data different techniques how it can be used for solving addressing the issues and the problems that do exist in any part of surface of the earth so my dear students we are trying to understand gis database creation how to create gis databases we all know gis 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 we commonly used to listen gis so let me tell you in a couple of line what is gis gis is nothing but is a computer based software which is very powerful tool to analyze manipulate assess the problem which are there in a space to understand and analyze the problems we need to have a data now the moment i say data i'll explain what is data let us see how we can create a data so any data cannot be used in a software in a computer software for that you need to have a software data uh, sorry a data which is compatible to a particular software so for that you need to create a data and therefore today's module is a gis database creation now let us try to understand what is a data data is nothing but is a, a anything which represents a particular feature which are there on a particular part of surface of the earth say for example if i say data could be in a form of number for example population if i say 1000 population 1 lakhs of population or 1 million population this is a data now if i say data could be also represented in a form of some textual say for example if i write 1000 population in text so that becomes a, a data say for example if i say data we are trying to understand what is data then we go to gis data if i say data could be in a form of numbers if i say 1000 people 10000 people or 1 million 1 million people so what we have that becomes a data so this could be in the form of number if i say data that could be in the form of text for example if i write 1000 population this is a data that represents 1000 population i can write like this 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 could be a number this could be in text the third is data could be in the form of symbol symbol so what we have data could be in the form of like this if i make like this so this could be a tree if i make it like this this could be a church if i make it like this this could be something a temple something like that and so and so or if i make like this so these are the grasses so if i put this symbol in a particular part of surface of the earth we can say how many if we count it then i can say how many particular uh, tree or church or temple is there in a particular part of the earth so this is another way of representing data so i was trying to give a glimpse of the data now we need to understand database creation in the gis or gis database creation so figure 1 clearly shows different component of gis database creation in that the very first is hardware 
सेकेंड इज अ सॉफ्टवेयर थर्ड इज अ हार्डवेयर एंड सॉफ्टवेयर बोथ देन फोर्थ इज द सिस्टम और यूजर वेयर बोथ हार्डवेयर एंड सॉफ्टवेयर आर बींग इंटीग्रेटेड एंड बींग यूज बाई अ यूजर लाइक वी एंड यू ओके एंड द नेक्स्ट इज द डेटा फॉर विच आई वॉज टॉकिंग यर वॉट इज अ डेटा नाउ दीज आर द ब्रॉड कॉम्पोनेंट हार्डवेयर सॉफ्टवेयर पीपल डेटा एंड बोथ हार्डवेयर एंड सॉफ्टवेयर टूगेदर सो दीज आर द ब्रॉड कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ डेटा बेज क्रिएशन दैट कैन बी क्लियरली सीन इन फिगर वन नाउ वी नीड टू नो वॉट आर डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डेटा डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ डेटा स्पेशली इन द जी आई एस डोमेन सो इन ब्रॉड कैटेगरीज देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ डेटा वन डेटा इज कॉल्ड वेक्टर डेटा एंड सेकेंड इज रास्टर डेटा सो बाई नाउ वी अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द डेटा नाउ वेक्टर डेटा एंड रास्टर डेटा दीज आर टू ब्रॉड कैटेगरीज ऑफ स्पेशल डेटा विच वी नॉर्मली कॉमनली यूज इन जी एस सॉफ्टवेयर सो द मोमेंट वी से द वेक्टर डेटा वेक्टर डेटा इज नथिंग बट इज अ पॉइंट लाइन और एरिया से इट इज अ पॉइंट लाइन और एरिया विच सेपरेट्स वन फीचर वन ऑब्जेक्ट फ्रॉम अनदर से फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ आई पुट अ पॉइंट लाइक दिस आई कैन पुट अ पॉइंट लाइक स्क्वायर आई कैन पुट अ पॉइंट लाइक सर्किल ओके सो दीज थ्री पॉइंट सिंबल रिप्रेजेंट अ पर्टिकुलर फीचर राइट Similarly, if I say the line, line could be like this, or line could be like this, or line could be like this. So there is one entity here, this side, another entity on the other side of the line, A or B, which separate two different features. Now third is a polygon. We can have n number of polygons, which separates one polygon, one feature, another polygon, another feature. What does it mean? If I have a soil type A, we can polygonize and say this is soil A, soil B, or alluvial soil, black soil, and something like that. So vector data is nothing but is a a data which is a discrete data, which separates precisely one with the another one. Now the moment I say raster data, raster data is not a discrete data; it is a continuous data. It is in continuity, which is represented. in a form of pixel pixel or cell each cell has its own values each cell has its own value say for example if i say cell 1 it may have uh, may have a value of say 50 another could be 55 something like that so each cell is independent to each other whereas in the vector data these are not independent but it is a big parcel which so what we have raster data and vector data so if you see figure 2 figure 2 clearly shows the vector data and real data uh, raster data sorry and the real world data if i have a real world say for example on a terrain we have the water body here we have the grasses here we have the sediment here so how we can represent it so figure 2 clearly shows the real world below then we have the raster data and the vector data that gives you a clear understanding so there are different advantages and disadvantages of vector data and raster data now our topic is gis database creation this is the point which we are trying to understand for a gis database we use both vector data and raster data both for creating a gis data layer so what we have seen from figure 2 that in the bottom we have the real world then we have the vector data and the raster data if you see the figure 2 what we have the water bodies marshes grasses like this so what we have 
if you represent the vector data, it will be a separate separate polygon each representing a particular feature. But if we see on the top of it, what we have the, the uh, all these features represented in different color in a grid form. So that is a raster data. So these are the two broad categories for which we have advantages and disadvantages both. When we want to use the vector data, when we want to use a raster data. I will come to the creation little later, but let us understand all these technologies the issue before going to the database creation. If we want to separate one field with another, if you want to separate a particular forest with another forest, you have to have a vector data. If you want to separate one land parcel with another land parcel, you have to have a vector data. But if you want to have a continuous you know, features analysis, then we have to have a raster data. For any GIS analysis, you have to have a vector data, get it converted to raster data, then you can go only for modeling, otherwise you cannot have the raster. So the moment we put all these cells get convert, uh, uh, polygons get converted to cells what we are seeing in the figure 2. So what we have uh, in the vector and raster both has advantage and disadvantage. What we do? We may convert raster data into vector data and from vector to raster both we do, we do analysis. Now you can ask okay, when we use the vector data, when we, use to, uh, we have to use the raster data that precisely depend upon your nature of the query, nature of uh, your problem. Now what GIS uh, 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 database creation, there are different important uh, issues that is there. One is data management, data management, second is data manipulation, third is data analysis. Fourth is a query, query and fifth is visualization, visualization. So what we have? GS database analysis, uh, database creation includes data management, data manipulation. The manipulation I mean if you want to change one to another, say for example if this pixel has a certain value maybe 50, this is 55. If you want to improve, change it, why? Because you want to emphasize certain particular feature and if you want to you know, suppress certain feature, then you need to change the digital number of particular raster data. For that, we do manipulation. Analysis, analysis means by involving different data layers, more than one or three, four, five data layers, we can go for analyzing certain problem. Query, if you want to build a query, say for example, if you want to do site suitable analysis, where all the particular soil is, where all a particular kind of, you know, forest type is there, what a particular, where all we can perform a particular human or economic activity, for that if you want to have a suitable site, so for that you can go for query. And visualization, that means what we have, if you want to See what all we do, management, manipulation, and query and all, obviously it has to come in the form of output. And when we say in the form of output, in the form of map. So what all analysis and uh, query building what we are doing in a software, that has to come in the form of printout and that can be seen on the computer screen or that will come as a print format, that document can be used for planning decision making process. So therefore, visualization. So before going to final printout, we can keep on changing, manipulating our result, modifying our result, seeing on the screen and then finally, uh, uh, we go for uh, printout uh, that can be you know, in a common domain for better understanding and usable, that can be usable by different people. Now let us understand what are different sources of data. So the sources of data. If I say sources of data, there are two sources. One is primary sources, sources and second is secondary sources of data. Now the moment I say primary sources of data, that means we can go to the field and collect the data by surveying. And that data, socioeconomic data, physical data, all these data can be used as a primary source of data 
that can be used for GIS database creation. We can go to household survey, we can ask the people ki what is your dietary habit, what is your age, what is your sex, what is your annual income, what is the health of your family people, what is the uh, uh, profile of uh, people and the family of your family health profile. So all these data can be a primary data and those survey data can be put in a GIS platform and we can create a data that becomes a GIS database. Now secondary source of data say for example, we can take the census data, the census data which is in published form, which is in published by census of India decade wise yearly and so and so all those data can be used as a secondary source of data for GIS database creation especially demographic or other socioeconomic profile data. Now these data sources which we are collecting whether primary or secondary in a form of numerical values all these data can be called as or is called as attribute data, attribute data, attribute data. Why attribute data? Because if I take any part or surface of the earth, say for example, this is Delhi or Mumbai, if I go and ask something here, ki what is your income, what is your family profile and so and so, if I go and ask a particular house, we can get the data from here, here and all. So similarly, if we survey any ward or districts, what we have, we have the data of socioeconomic data of each and every ward and in, in long term we can have a data of whole of the city or area and that data is a, a primary data or the same data if we get it from the published data from any other sources that becomes a secondary data. Now how it becomes a GIS database? The moment I plot all these data in a form of say like this Kuroth map or Kurochromatic map or something like this. So what will happen? it get attached to the particular part of surface of the earth. So as an attribute data, it get converted into GIS data and therefore what we get GIS data base. So as of now or till some years from now, maybe a couple of decades from now, what we used to have? We used to have a GIS data base from mainly from the primary and secondary sources. Say for example, topo sheet, we put it in a you know computer software, how we do it? We have the data input, we will talk little later. Then we have the uh, data from census that we get attached to the uh, tehsil wise or village wise or block wise or ward wise and we make it like this, a map like this. So it becomes a GIS database. Now, what we have, we have the other special data and that special data is a data from as I said the topo sheet, aerial photograph, satellite images. So what we can say, now the data can be further classified into, GIS data can be classified into non-special data, non-special data and second is special data. So non-special data as I was talking to you that these non-special data we get it from different organization agencies, ministries, this is a published form which is in published form in a numerical form. So that is a non-special data and we also call it the attribute data like what we have seen here. Now special data as I mentioned before is a, a data which is in the form of paper, in the form of map, topo sheet data which is surveyed and made by Survey of India at a different scale, at a scale of 1 is to 25,000, 1 is to 50,000, 1 is to 2 lakh 50,000, 1 is to even million. All these data are classified into special databases and that data can be used as a creating a database for a particular part of the surface of the earth. Now other special data sources is a satellite data, satellite data from various sensors, aerial photographs, aerial photos and so and so. So what we do is, 
we do have a special software for handling or for analyzing satellite data or aerial photograph. After analyzing and handling in a particular image processing software, what we do is we also create a particular database. Now, after understanding all these issues, let us understand what are different methods, what are different techniques or how do we create a database. So, let us talk about method and techniques of creating a database, GIS database. So, to understand and to know precisely how GIS database is created. So, if you use any non-special special data, as I said that these are the GIS is a computer based software which is powerful tool for handling and analyzing the special problems. So, the data is in print form in a sensor booklet, data is in a form of say for example maps, data is in a form of satellite which are or aerial photograph which are there separately. So, how it should come? So, it should come through various inputs. So, let us know what are different inputs through which data can be put inside a software on a GIS platform. So, there are different ways one is by scanning. If we have a scanner attached to a computer, we scan it will come in a GIS domain and then we convert into GIS analysis portable format. For that there is another lecture on that. We can give an input of special and non-special data. Say for example, the census data we can give through keyboards. So, scanning is one way of inputting the GIS database in a software. By keyboard is another way of inputting this uh, data in a software. If you have a data on a CD or in a you know, uh, uh, pen drive, so you can put and then import or copy and paste in a system. So, these are the different common ways through which the data can be put inside a GIS software. Now, there are different ways to create a GIS database and I said that these are two broad categories of creation of vector data GIS database and raster data GIS based. So, for this we have different method. So, let us understand one by one how we can create a vector data and the raster data. If I take the raster data which is most important and for this we use the satellite data, we use the satellite data. As I said, the satellite data are geocoded or uh, if it is not geocoded, we need to geocode it, georeference it is the same and then we can put in a GIS domain and once we geocode or georeference, it truly represent a particular part of the surface of the earth. Similarly, if you have vector data or topo sheet, we import it, we scan it, put in a GIS format and then we geocode it or georeference it. So, georeferencing means by using a precise datum coordinate system and, and, and the coordinates. By using datum projection system and coordinate, we georeference of any topo sheet or map and once you geocode it, georeference it, it truly represents a particular part of the surface of the earth for which it belongs to. So, what we have once we do that, it becomes a, a GIS database. Now, to analyze and to draw any information, we can go both way, either we can vectorize it or rasterize it. For vectorization, we simply go for digitizing manually. Through different diagrams, different figures, figure 3, 4, 5, 6, I am trying to explain you how we can create vector database or raster database. So, in continuation of uh, GIS database creation, various method. Raster database creation, I said scanning of maps and topo sheets and all. Second is image processing that is by using satellite data, I said that we need to use a particular software, digital image processing software to create raster data by using digital satellite data, not the uh, print format of satellite data. Second category is a vector, vector data based creation that can be done by manual digitization, on a screen digitization by using photographs, by geocoding, by using global positioning system or automatic, automated surveying. Now, if you see figure 4 which clearly shows there are two photographs in this figure 4 satellite images right side and left side. If you see left side 
that is raw satellite data. And if you see the right side of the figure 4, that is the extracted information from the uh, satellite data of the left side. So, this is what we have by using the image processing. We have different classes of different line parcel. Now, if you see figure 5, which is manual digitization. If you see this figure 5, there are two tables. On the left side, we have the computer and the software. On the right side, we have a table on which you see there is a map. On the map, there is a tablet digitization is there. If you move that uh, tablet on the lines or the features, it will take through this wire, it will create the data in the computer in the particular software. But this is a very old method that is not in uh, use now. This is the starting of GIS. If you see figure 6, that is on screen hand hit, hands up digitization. In this what we do is, the on the computer screen in a software, the image or the map is displayed and you keep on moving your cursor and extract the information as per your need and requirement and then you get the uh, vector data, uh, uh, GIS database. If you see figure 7, that is geocoding, you see the different lines and points, you put the different points, different latitude and longitude in a particular place of your own interest and create a, a data, GIS database of your own interest by geocoding. This is another method of creation of GIS database. Now, figure 5 shows the GPS. In other modules, you must have uh, learned how we can collect the data of special features on a particular part of the surface of the earth by using the GPS technology. So, what we have the figure 5, 8 shows that uh, there is a satellite and there is one car moving and you have installed a GPS in the car and then you are collecting the data of particular feature at different interval. This is another way of creating a special data that could be in a form of point, line or polygon. Now, the last figure 9 is very interesting where we are using you will see in the figure that there is a total station that combines with the theodolite with electronic distance measurement EDMs that calculates the distance which is the most sophisticated instrument in order to create GIS databases. So, to summarize today's lecture, I do hope that you must have understood very well what is GIS, what are the GIS databases, what are GIS sources. In this module, we have tried to talk, try to address the different sources of data, primary sources of data, secondary sources of data, aerial photographs, satellite data and these satellite data and aerial photograph at a different scale, different resolution. We do have understood by now what are different uh, uh, data uh, types, vector data, raster data, what are different vector data, what are different raster data, how we can use for each and every problems, what kind of data do we need to have, what are different uh, softwares which we use for GIS analysis, what are different components of GIS, database creation, what are different techniques and methods. So, by and large in today's lecture, we have covered very well uh, in this uh, lecture. I do hope understand that you must have uh, got uh, detail and glimpse of it and if anything remains that you can also further clarify understood by reading the text which is uploaded on the website. Thank you so much for your patience and understanding.